Rain lashed down, each drop exploding on the cracked pavement. Wind howled through the rafters of the old train station, a mournful, lonely sound. Lightning flashed, momentarily illuminating the dilapidated building and the rusted tracks beyond. It was a night for staying indoors, for huddling under blankets, but Sarah was stuck. She paced the platform, her breath misting in the cold air. The station was deserted, the ticket booth empty, its window cobwebbed. Where was everyone? Where was her train? She checked her watch again, the luminous hands glowing faintly in the gloom. Almost midnight, the last train was late, very late. Thunder cracked, making Sarah jump. She hugged her thin jacket closer, shivering. She just wanted to go home. This station, with its peeling paint and eerie silence, was starting to creep her out. She had been traveling for hours, her connecting train delayed due to the storm. This remote station was the last stop before her destination. Now, she was stranded, alone, with only the wind and the rain for company. Her phone had died hours ago, the battery drained by countless futile attempts to find a signal. There were no vending machines, no pay phones, no sign of life at all. Just Sarah, the storm, and the growing feeling that something was very, very wrong. Another flash of lightning, brighter this time, illuminated a clock on the far wall. Midnight. Just as she was starting to lose all hope, a distant rumble reached her ears. Could it be? Was it finally arriving? The rumble grew louder, accompanied by a rhythmic clang of metal on metal. A deep, mournful whistle echoed across the empty landscape. Out of the driving rain a train emerged, its headlights cutting through the darkness. Relief washed over Sarah, followed immediately by a wave of unease. This was no ordinary train, this train was ancient, a relic from a bygone era. The engine was a hulking, steam-powered beast, belching black smoke and sparks. The carriages behind it were made of dark wood, the windows opaque and grimy. It looked more like a ghost train from an old movie than a mode of transportation. As the train screeched to a halt in front of her, showering her with sparks, Sarah hesitated. This wasn't her train, it couldn't be, but then what other choice did she have? Section 4. Boarding the Unknown. The train's doors hissed open, revealing a dimly lit interior. Sarah took a deep breath and boarded, her heart pounding. The air inside was heavy and still, thick with the smell of dust and coal smoke. She made her way down the narrow aisle, her footsteps echoing in the silence. The train was deserted, or so it seemed. The seats were old and plush, upholstered in a faded, velvety fabric. They were empty, yet Sarah could have sworn she saw indentations, as if someone had been sitting there moments before. A cold draft brushed against her neck, and she spun around, but there was nothing there. Just the empty carriage, the swaying lanterns casting long, dancing shadows. She was alone. Utterly alone. Section 5. Ghostly Passengers. The train lurched forward, picking up speed with surprising swiftness. Sarah gripped the back of a seat, her knuckles turning white. She glanced out the window, but all she could see was darkness and the reflection of her own frightened face. Where was this train taking her? As the train rattled through the night, Sarah became aware of a soft murmuring sound. She looked around, her heart pounding in her chest. The train was no longer empty. Silently, ghostly figures had materialized in the seats around her. They were dressed in clothing from another time, their faces pale and indistinct. They didn't seem to notice her, their eyes gazing blankly ahead. 